It finally happened, and I know what you're thinking. What finally happened, Lawrence? Are you all right? And this is what happened. The thing that I said in an old video came back to bite me in the, a in the face. You see, last year when I was still Chunky Lawrence, I made a video all about North American bird species that can't be found in Britain. One such species found commonly throughout the United States was the morning dove. Here's what I said at the time. If you, like I, move to the United States, you will almost certainly spot this bird from time to time. When you do spot them, they'll most likely be sunbathing, you know, a bit like my cat. In fact, come to think of it, my cat would definitely be the movie villain who says, Morning Dove, we're not so different, you and I. Actually, now that I think about it, I can't imagine a dove being the protagonist either. So where did I go wrong? Well, let's analyze my words line by line. You will almost certainly spot this bird from time to time. That part is true. Morning doves are among some of the most abundant birds in the United States. With just over one morning dove for every person in America. Moreover, they can be found in virtually all of the country. Some even breed in Canada and unleash their offspring in the United States, a bit like Justin Bieber's parents. When you do spot them, they'll most likely be sunbathing. Again, this is true. Morning doves do make very ardent sunbathers. And you might be thinking, ooh, Lawrence, how do you know so much about the bathing sensibilities of birds? Well, firstly, I'm an Englishman in his early 40s, so that's my life now. And secondly, it just so happens that this spring, a pair of morning doves claimed my window ledge as their own personal sunbed. <laughs> When they first showed up in May, I initially forgot about the words of Chunky Lawrence and felt an unearned sense of honor that these North American residents chose that window in my studio at this time to chill out like absolute lazy f In fact, come to think of it, my cat would definitely be the movie villain who says, Morning Dove, we're not so different, you and I. Yes. Again, true. My cat firmly believes that sunlight travels 94 million miles just for him personally. And underneath those striking green eyes and that pristine grey fur, Kafka, like all cats, is an unrepentant psychopath whose only thoughts centre around the complete annihilation of birds and plastic bags. And if you think I'm exaggerating or using my cat for clicks, then you're very observant. But watch his reaction to meeting the morning doves right here for the very first time. Is there a birdie? Is there a birdie out the window, Mr. Kafka? You gonna get it? You can't get it. He doesn't even know you're there. Some predator you are. Look at that tail. Birdie just looking for worms. He isn't gonna find worms on the windowsill. Oh, you scared him. Actually, now that I think about it, I can't imagine a dove being the protagonist either. This is where I went wrong. The morning doves are undoubtedly the good guys of this story. Not only do they gain the sympathy vote for enduring my cat, but it turns out they had other, more adorable things on their minds beyond sorting out their farmer's tans. The thing is, after telling my niece all about these birds at her fifth birthday party, I came back to the studio to discover one of them was still having a party of its own next to my window. It was surely in for one almighty hangover. After making sure it was okay and asking it what the bird equivalent of ibuprofen was, I put out this feeler on Twitter. <laughs> The tweet prompted a response from one of my followers, Barb, who suggested the birds were using my window ledge as a nest. This gave me cause for concern. Would they be okay? So don't worry about that. Would they be okay so close to the edge? When did birds get so into concrete? And would they go halves with me on the rent? As I perused credible sources such as allaboutbirds.com, it was clear that Barb was right. This male and female couple were expecting children, but in feathery bird form. As a result, I thereafter banned Kafka from the studio to give the bird some much needed space. My cat made his disdain for this decision very clear. Oh, so tired. I'm gonna go for a nap on my side of the bed. The next day, he and or she was still there. In fact, as the days rolled by in a way that demanded stock footage of a very generic looking calendar, 
Every day for the next three weeks, the mother and father alternated between occupying this precise space on the window ledge. Given that they were well-fed birds, it was hard to see what, if anything, lay beneath them. Nonetheless, I found myself forming an unbreakable bond with the morning doves that will stay with me forever, even though the birds called social services on me last Tuesday. After about 24 days of watching them just sit and occasionally blink, I began to think that maybe I'd misread the situation. Maybe they weren't expecting offspring at all, but were hiding from whatever the equivalent of an avian drugs cartel was. But then, on June 17th, 2022, everything changed. <clears throat> There is something deeply moving and at the same time truly disturbing about the sight of a mother bird feeding its young. But I didn't have time to dwell on that because I was just so thrilled that they even arrived, being able to rejoice in my small, non-existent role in making this happen. Of course, these pre-fledglings likely entered the world weeks before that clip was filmed, causing myself and Kafka to feel really bad about myself. Had I known at the time that the two grown-ups weren't just sitting there out of boredom, Kafka would have been banished from the very start. Thankfully, they all appear to be doing well, so I let them have some family time away from Uncle Lawrence, a name that the birds themselves kindly bestowed upon me in no way whatsoever. A couple of days and several pathetic meows would pass before I checked in on them again. This time, with the parents presumably out shopping, I was finally able to get a look at the baby birds. What immediately struck me was that morning doves evidently had something else in common with my cat. They looked fuzzy as children. Just as it was becoming clear that the events of the last few weeks would soon evolve into the most adorable video on the internet, I was taken aback by another surprise the next morning. For the first time in more than a month, there are no birds outside of my window, which is something I've not said since I was at university. For the next 24 hours, I felt a profound sense of emptiness. The birds, who had felt in many ways like a second family, were gone. In an effort to overcome my sorrow, I returned to the sanctuary of allaboutbirds.com, only to discover that the actual address was allaboutbirds.org. Thankfully, they're not sponsoring this video. And here, to my surprise, I learned that morning doves often come back to the same nest year after year, and sometimes even sooner, if the mood takes them. Well, today is day... I don't know what day it is, and the mother is back and the children are gone. I've never done this before, so I'm slightly worried that they fell off. That they're probably flying, which would be great for them. Wish I could do that. It's not fair. Look at you, just proudly sitting there, wanting me to go away, hoping that the sun will shine on your back and that your children will go off to college. Okay, I'll leave you to it. Oh, there's another one. It's the, oh, I think that's the dad, unless the babies grew up really fast. They might have done. I can't tell them apart now. It's fair to say that the last few weeks have given me great insight into one of America's most talked about birds. And I hope this was useful to you as well. After all, it's not every day that we get to peek in on somebody else's family drama, especially when we're busy contending with our own. Look, I'm sorry, but you can't have the doves. They're not for sale. Even if you offered me a million dollars, because it would contravene various wildlife protection laws. No, you can't have the unicorn hat back. And that's the story of my North American bird friends. Why not complete the circle of life by following me on the bird app, otherwise known as Twitter, at Lost in the Pond US. Furthermore, please subscribe to Lost in the Pond so that I don't have to. Goodbye.